Today you're going to learn nine things in Adobe Illustrator that you probably don't know, but if you would like a successful career as a professional designer, then you absolutely should. And these tips will save you time, they will make using Illustrator so much easier, and most importantly, they will make your design work look much more professional. So if you've watched any of my live streams, you'll know that I'm constantly going on about wonky, janky curves not being smooth. And this first one is a lesser known trick to get perfectly smooth curves with very little effort. So normally you'd go and get the pen tool and then you'd click, drag, click, drag and create something like this, which is... And yes, this is awful, so let's delete it. Yes, let's. Right, now that's gone, you can go and select the pen tool or the line segment tool. And with the line tool, click and hold shift to draw a straight line. And now the trick, go to effect, down to distort and transform and select zigzag. Now let's move the window so we can see what we're doing. And here you can adjust the sides and the ridges per segment, but you can also change the points to smooth. And if we bring those values down, you can see this is a very easy way to get perfect curves. And this looks great, but there is one more thing we need to do. So if we switch into outline mode, you can see it's still a line with an effect applied. What we need to do is go to object and down to expand appearance, and then you'll see the shapes geometry change. And what expand appearance does is apply any effects on the selected object. So that wavy line is now just a regular path. And now it's a regular path, we can do a bit more with it. So let's scale it down and move it down here and then perhaps thicken up that stroke weight. And now we can go and grab the pen tool and we can go and turn this into a closed shape. And this technique is much easier than drawing those curves along the bottom manually. Next up, we're gonna look at one of the easiest ways to draw freehand and still get those beautifully smooth lines, even if you are still using a mouse. <laughs> still using a mouse, Jesus, I sound like a tablet elitist. Anyway, let's select the shape we created previously and switch to the direct selection tool. Now, if I hold shift and click on multiple corner widgets, I can drag them to the center to round off the corners. And let's do this for the bottom two as well. There we go, very nice. Is it just me or does that look like a nose? Right, now let's go and select the pencil tool. And before we start drawing any squiggles, let's double click the pencil tool to get more options. And first of all, let's crank up the smoothness of anything we draw and also make sure that keep selected and edit selected paths are also checked. Because now if we click and drag over an existing path, we can completely redraw it. And if I decide I don't like that one, I can draw over those paths again to completely reshape it. And if it starts drawing a new path instead of redrawing the existing one, you can tweak the settings for the pencil tool or just zoom in a bit and try again. And this is a lot of fun, so let's do a few more. Let's do a nice big droopy drip. There we go. Cool, that's a big one. Now let's do another slightly smaller, more squiggly one. Very nice. As you can see, very good for freehanding splat shapes. And even though I'm using a mouse, all of these lines are completely smooth. Now, recently I said that very rarely will I ever use the Puppet Warp tool. And ever since saying that, I now find myself constantly using it. And I'll bet that even if you have used it before, you've never used it quite like this. Okay, this is a good one. So I have a circle and a line. First up, let's make that line white. And then I'm going to click and hold on the free transform tool. And underneath is the Puppet Warp tool. And it adds a few control points by default, but we can select and delete them. And then with the pin picker pricker, we can add our own. Sorry, that's not a thing. I just made it up. Right, let's add one in the middle and one at either end. And if we click and drag these control points, you can see that we can actually bend the line. And we can also hover over that dotted line around the edge and rotate the line as well. So if I rotate the other side as well, you can see this bends nicely into a wavy line. And I can also adjust the rotation of that point in the center and control how the bend actually looks. And this looks fine, but there is another tool that will pair perfectly with this technique. And this tool is the width tool. And despite everything, this is still a regular line. So we can click and drag with this tool on one end to make it thicker and then make the other end thinner. And if we switch back to the puppet warp tool, we still have all of our control points that we've added and everything is fully editable. Now let's just spend a second tinkering with this. There we go, that looks pretty good, nice and smooth. But this is still a white line, so we will need to go and expand the appearance. And if we select both shapes, from the Pathfinder options, we can select minus front, and this will knock out the white shape from the black shape. Now, have you ever spent ages creating a text effect only for someone to come along and ask you to change a word, a few letters? That's not a problem, is it? No, not at all is what I'd be saying if I hadn't spent three hours making it. And then you typically have to create the entire thing from scratch again, just to change a few bloody letters. Well, not anymore because check this out. Right, so I've got some text. First of all, I'm going to select it and remove the fill. And yes, I know everything disappears, but let's go to the appearance panel and add a new fill. And then we're going to add that white color back in. Just trust me, we have to build it from scratch. Right, let's add another fill and we're going to make this one red. And just make sure this one is underneath on the bottom. Now let's add an effect to the red one and convert this to a rectangle. And as you can see, it does just that. And we can adjust these values to basically add some padding. 
Now let's get a bit more creative. Select the white fill and go to warp and select arc lower. Let's make this a negative value so it bends ever so slightly. There we go. And then I'm going to select the red fill, go to effect and apply that same effect again. Now, depending on the font you're using and that font's bounding box, it may not be vertically centered. So this is how to adjust the position of the text and still maintain that relationship to the red rectangle. So let's add another effect to the white fill, and that is going to be the transform effect. And we can adjust the values here to move the text around, but still maintain that relationship to the red rectangle. And if you'd like to knock out that white text from the red shape, first you need to group everything, even though it's one object, uh, don't ask me why, and then add the effect pathfinder and subtract. And as you can see, it knocks the white text out of the red rectangle, revealing the background. And of course, we can double click to go inside this group and we can still edit the text and everything else. And a quick shout out to everyone on the stream who tried to figure this out and Mark who saved the day with the winning solution. Team effort guys, well done. This next one is about shearing, not the sheep kind, the other kind. And it seems simple at first until you realize there's quite a few ways to do this badly. And we want to avoid that. And one of those ways is selecting your text, going to effect, and then selecting free distort. And yes, this can work, but you have to eyeball it in this teeny tiny window, which will always lead to inconsistencies. So yeah, you can use it, but it isn't the best solution. And we do have the weird and wonderful warp effects, but none of these are quite what I'm looking for. Which leads me on to the shear tool, which is something that I don't think I've ever covered on the channel. I think I said shear tool then. <laughs> it's actually the shear tool and it's underneath the scale tool. And if you're a lunatic, you can click and drag and as you can see, it does this. Not very helpful, but with this tool selected, press return and this window will pop up and we can now enter a specific value. And as you can see, the text gradually becomes sheared and we can do this along the horizontal and vertical axes. So in this example, let's go for minus 20. And if I select the text below and again select the shear tool and press return, I can then go and enter that same value of minus 20. And the great thing about doing it this way is this text is still fully editable. And unlike the free distort effect, if I add or remove letters, it will still maintain the same angle. Right, for this next one, have you ever found some good looking fonts on a site somewhere? The examples make the font look great, you install it, and then you type something. And it looks about as good as shit covered ice cream. Well, before you write off the font as trash, allow me to introduce you to stylistic alternates. So here I have some text. The font itself is great, but it doesn't look that good at the moment. So let's select it, go to type and select glyphs. And some fonts like this one contain alternative versions of the same letter, also known as stylistic alternates. So if I select the letter U, you can see they pop up here. And actually I've got five to choose from. Goodness, I'm being spoiled. And if I just go through the other letters, some of these are a bit more chill, some are pretty crazy, and they can kind of mess up your spacing or the swirly swooshes collide with other letters. And Illustrator shows you a few of the alternates directly on the canvas, but if you have the glyphs panel open, there might be even more. So as you can see, the default glyphs were pretty awful, but now just going through and picking some different ones, this actually looks really nice. Okay, for this next one, if you'd like to take any two-dimensional design and turn it into an isometric masterpiece, this is the fastest way to do it and keep everything non-destructive. And what that means is basically keep everything fully editable. So here I have some text and I'm going to select this, go to effect, go to 3D and materials, and I'm actually going to go to 3D classic and choose extrude and bevel. From the drop down at the top, we do have some isometric presets and there is actually one that's missing. It's like this, but pointing the other way. The easiest way to create it is to add a minus here in the middle box and remove the minus in the bottom box. And this flips it around the other way and then simply bring the extrude depth down to zero and change the surface to no shading and then click OK, and we have some isometric text, all of which is still fully editable. See, still editable. There we go. And to apply that to another shape really quickly, just create something, go to effect, and then apply that effect instantly at the top. And we can turn that square into a nice isometric border. Now, have you ever tried creating a color palette? Let's say for skin tones. You want a base color, some shadows, some highlights, but it takes ages to create all of those color swatches from scratch. Well, this next one is probably going to annoy you a bit because you're about to learn that you've wasted hours of your life doing it manually. But the good news is that you're going to save plenty of hours from here on out. <laughs> yeah, this one is great. So here you can see I have three circles and I'm going to select the blend tool. I'm going to click on the darkest one, the middle one, and then the lightest one. And you can see it blends one into the other, into the other. And I can double click the blend tool to get more options. And from the drop down, I can choose specified steps and then simply adjust this value depending on how many steps you'd like. And I think something like that looks good to me, but there's more we can do with this. So let's go to object and expand, leave everything checked and click okay. 
And then from the top of the swatches panel, click the menu icon and select add selected colors. And all of these colors are instantly added into the swatches panel as global swatches, which means that we can edit the colors throughout the entire document simply by changing them in the swatches panel. And lastly, a super speedy way to change the colors in your design. So maybe you created a thing and the colors were slightly off, or perhaps you just like to see how your design would look with some different colors. Well, if so, this is the fastest way to change them together with the recent addition of a new generative AI counterpart. So here you can see I've spent far too long creating a 3D cup with the mesh tool. And if I select the lid, I can go to edit, edit colors and recolor artwork, close down annoying pop-up. And then let's reposition this panel. And I can now click on each of these colors and drag them around the color wheel to instantly change the colors. And there's also a new feature at the top, generative recolor. And we can use a preset or type our own, banana barista, I don't know what that means. Agree to bullshit user guidelines that no one reads. And you can see it generates some variations. And it's done a pretty good job to be fair. I like that. Actually, let's try it again. Let's go for something a bit more creative. Fluffy McWuffy Wuff Wuff. I've got no idea what it's gonna do. Okay, that's interesting. We have a nice complimentary brown. But this one down here, this is definitely fluffy McWuffy Wuff Wuff. And there we go, my friends. We have reached the end of the video. But don't worry, there is more illustrated goodness that you can click on on screen somewhere right now. But as always, take care and I'll see you next time.